They tell me the day I was born I came shooting out of that wild jungle wearing nothing but my birthday suit. I was a quirky little thing sporting crazy gold locks that meticulously matched my fabulous yellow hue, which I guess wasn't welcome because they immediately juggled me back and forth under some strange light they called a heat lamp. Right off the bat, I remember being quite the foodie. It was all the rage. Of course, I only ate locally and luckily never had to wait in line or make reservations like those other underprivileged triplets, the Mahoney's. No, I ate like a queen, 100% organic, unfiltered, and drug-free. It didn't take long for me to figure out these magnificently large food sources also had other talents to share with me. From umbrellas to sunglasses, pillows to blankets, their sole purpose was to keep me clean, warm, safe, and alive. What most groupies called cleavage, I called air pockets. It was in those formative years that my search for meaning through lingerie began. How could it not? I was literally bombarded with every size, shape, pattern, color, material, or lack of materials a person could find. I mean, talk about options. Someday, I thought, if I was lucky enough, I would be just like my Nana Bess. Now there was something to strive for. The perfect cocktail made up of size, scent, sophistication, and bling. Her ladies controlled the power of communication, purposefully peeking out to manipulate the world around her. Nana Bess was my hero. So you can imagine the excitement on my ninth birthday when Nana Bess, after months of my persistent nagging and against my parents' better judgment, presented me with a small box elaborately decorated with yellow foil. The contents completely unsurpassed my wildest imagination. A brand new, fresh off the shelf, 100% polyester, sunbeam yellow, tag still attached, training brassiere. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, I scream while grabbing a handful of lemons from the fruit bowl. Look at me, I yell gleefully. I finally had girlfriends! These yellow comrades were loyal to me for several years, and then it happened. When life hands you lemons, you make... Sports were never quite my strong suit, but being forced to play soccer gave me my first introduction into the world of spandex. I mean, sure, sports bras weren't constructed with all kinds of adjustable gadgets, like the ones my older cousins had. But they did have this incredibly appealing shine and texture, to which I actually grew quite fond of. And had I not played sports, I never would have been alone in the locker room the day Shelley Lieberman accidentally left her too-cool-for-school yellow the sports sack travel bag behind. What? You can actually buy them pre-stuffed? What? I can't remember if I said that out loud, but I do remember impatiently taking the trains, planes, and automobile express route directly home, frantically breaking into my do not use except for emergency this means you babysitting security stash, and instantaneously training in my once so noble state of the art shiny piece of polyester for that ever so current 100% cotton yellow checkered padded flower bra. The payoff? A first class ticket into the world of the cheerleaders. And just when I thought it couldn't get much better in my universe of pampered paddings, in came push ups. It absolutely dumbfounded me how the closest thing to God had been sitting there right under my nose, exposed and accessible for all these years. I had tasted the Kool-Aid. There was no turning back. I quickly became the push-up bombshell of Bourbon Street, and man, did I work that story. If Teaser was my middle name, Tits and Temptation was my game. Those amateurs who never paid any attention to me in pre-K were now pounding the pavement for just a glimpse of what I had to offer. And believe me, I enjoyed every waking second. Seven months later, my Nana Bess had a weekend layover in New Orleans and decided to crash at my place. I yearned for her hugs, knowing that hidden in its incredibly warm and welcoming fragrant bosoms exposed the magical memories of where my journey first began. I couldn't wait to see her and tell her all about my new extravagantly excessive adventures and purchases. That night after she arrived, I noticed an item hanging out to dry. It was a piece of lingerie I'd never seen before. At first glance, it looked like a typical bra shape my expertise had come to recognize but on closer inspection, it was quite curious. It had two huge pockets filled with what felt like balloons made up of liquid or gel, complete with hard built-in nipples securely sewn to the outside fabric. What the hell was this, I thought, and for the life of me, I couldn't figure it out. Of course, without hesitation, I tried it right on. Wow, I laughed. My grandmother sure has all sorts of wonderful hidden secrets in her closet. Nana Best died a few weeks later from breast cancer. With her death, so too ended my lifelong search for meaning. In one quick instance, I understood. Perception is skin deep, and beauty is relative. Being born with or without excess fatty tissue has absolutely no relevance to my womanhood. Tits would never define me again.